हेलो फ्रेंड्स हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कंसेप्ट रिकर्शन आई एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चैनल टेक टॉक्स हियर आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल टेक टॉक्स एंड कीप द बेल रिंगिंग now let's start with the next part of this video series see friends we have already done with the introduction to recursion why and why do we need required the concept of recursion in our programming then also we have seen the types of recursion as well as what the cases that is base case and the recursive case are with their example in this video we will cover the next part and if you want to go through the previous content i am providing you a link in the description box so now let's start with the working of the recursion working of the recursion first thing what you have to keep in mind recursion performs a number of repetitive calls to the function within the function that already we have seen then the next important concept is about the recursive condition this will help you to perform the repetitive call right recursive condition will help you to perform the repetitive call but that repetitive call should stop at the some moment some time after some time so this will base case will help you to stop the execution of the repeated function call so both this recursive condition and the base condition are important when you will write the program for the recursion then the base case is present inside the function and once the condition of the base case is satisfied it stops its execution so this is also called as the exit condition or it is also called as the termination condition which helps to exit from the recursion so now let's talk with the example so let's solve the factorial of 5 using recursion this is the function where factorial is the name of function here you can see it's called recursively one integer number is passed to the function the very first condition is if n is greater than or equal to 1 we will return the current n and we will call the recursive function call with n minus 1 and if this condition is not a true it means it is a false it will return the value 1 how it will it will work just see in a short way so very first time as as i have seen i have said that let's find out a factorial of 5 5 is passed to the factorial function and here the condition is true hence 5 is multiply with the factorial a recursive function called to 5 minus 1 that is 4 you can see over here after that the next function call the 4 will be n value hence 4 then factorial of 3 then 3 will be the value of n factorial of 2 2 will be a value of n and factorial of 1 and at the end this will be passed as 1 minus and that is zero the condition will be false and it will return a value 1 so here you can see i have written a value 1 now how it will calculate the things here you can see that this is nothing but the result of fact 1 function then the next one this will be a result of fact 2 function this will be the result of fact 3 function this 24 will be the result of fact 4 function and at the end you will return the value with 120 which will be the result of the factorial function where n was 5 so in detail i'll explain the working of the factorial function with the recursion here we go so this is the factorial function n is equal to 5 we can see here then n is equal to 4 as the condition is true factorial function is called recursively with the value n so for the function execution of this factorial value of n is 4 let's make a recursive function call to a factorial function again with the n minus 1 that is the n current n is 4 n minus 1 is 3 and in this way we will make a function call one by one by 
performing n minus 1 operation this function will perform the operation till the condition is true now see what happens here currently n is equal to 1 current n is greater than or equal to 1 the condition is true hence we will make a call to factorial function once again and here n is become 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0 so hence here in this function call n is equal to 0 here you can see how many duplicate copies of the same function is here so for the value of n 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 duplicate copies are there all they are having separate variables in a memory and all they will get executed separately in the memory this also i am going to explain you how this will going to be happen in the next part of this video currently let's understand how it works so now let's for n is equal to one value n is equal to sorry n is equal to zero value what will happen this condition is false and hence it will return a value one you can see over here it will return a value one so factorial function for this function will return a value one after this what will happen this function will get executed and for n is equal to one this factorial value is replaced with 1, 1 multiplied by 1 will be 1, the final result will be 1. After this, this, this function, this return statement will return value 1. Currently, for this block, which is highlighted here, is for currently n is equal to 2 and this function will be replaced with the previous return value that is 1. So, 2 multiplied by 1, what it will return? It will return uh, the value 2. 2. Now, let us focus on this block. Okay, this block. Currently, n value, value of n is 3 is multiplied with the replaced, the previous return value is replaced with this fact function call. It is nothing but 2. So, 3 multiplied by 2 will be the return value 6. It will return to the previous function call. Currently, for this function, the value of n is 4 n multiplied by that is 4 multiplied by the current return value is 6 6 4s are 24 hence it will return a value 24 to this function call currently for this function call the value of n is 5 5 multiplied by the return value is 24 24 5s are 120 this will be your final result for the factorial of 5 in this way your factorial function will will be executed now let us see where do we have to start how to write the factorial function so very first thing you have to think about a base case identify the stopping or exit condition termination condition which will be the solution known and the trivial the correct one it prevents the function from infinite calling itself and helps to exit from a recursive function. The second step will be a recursive case. You have to identify or define the proper recursive case which will help you to perform repeatedly function call. The call the function recursively to solve each sub problem. And the next step will be ensure recursion terminates correctly or not. So, make sure that the recursion function eventually reaches the best case or not. And ultimately, check whether it is not entering into the infinite loop. And at the end, the last step will be combine the solution. So, combine the solutions of a sub problem to solve the original problem as and when required of a given problem. So, let us start to solve some solved examples two solved examples i have covered in this video so the first example is if i want to find out the sum of all digits up to a particular number what the function i have to write down so this is the function which i have already implemented here you can see that what is the problem we suppose to find out the sum of all digits up to a particular number for that entered by the user with the help of recursion and now we will see over here this is the which one is the base case and which one is the recursive case so this is the base case which will help you to exit from a function if number is not equal to 0 we will 
perform the repeated function call with the recursive function call sum with num plus as we want to find out the sum of the digits up to a particular number and hence it will perform the recursive operation and it will give a result for the eta number 5 sum will be 15 that is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 in this way it will give the result 15. Now let us move forward for the second example to find out a Fibonacci series. Here this is the solution given to you Fibonacci series using recursion. In Fibonacci series, what do you mean by Fibonacci series? In the Fibonacci series, each number is the sum of its previous two numbers and this is the base case and this one is the recursive case and it will give a result like this. So, in this way, we can perform the operation. So, thank you friends for listening and watching this video. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.